Wait, is this play about us? Thank you, Leah. For tagging me in this wanting an attorney perspective on what the creator can do. I am JJ Gat. If you don't know me, I help our fellow content creator decipher the laws and rules and regulations regarding their status as a content creator in the content creator economy. And so I am very happy to give my opinion on this. Now, I would love to say that what happened was that a popular skincare brand called Cetaphil for Black History Month decided to license out a three video series that a black female creator um, produced on TikTok, compensated her fairly for her work, for her ingenuity, for her inventiveness and her innovation in that series and turn it, use that license they paid for into a Super Bowl ad to air tonight on the Super Bowl. And that'd be great if that was a story, but that's not what happened here. So I did get a chance to look at the video that I was tagged in. And I'm going to show you a, that TikTok that that creator that I was tagged in and then a couple of other TikToks that I found after I dug a little bit deeper into the well of this from people from the advertising and PR agencies suggesting what they would have done differently just to give you some context before I go forward and give my legal opinion on what I think the creator has her rights that she had what Cetaphil can do to make this right and then what I think really happened here in this case and the examples of the past that I think this resembles and why we are here and we're going to continue to be here in the future so listen to first to this series Sharon is a content creator on TikTok. Last September, she posted some TikToks about her and her dad connecting on football because of Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. Around two days ago, Cetaphil released their Super Bowl commercial early on TikTok, and Sharon made a video response to it, accusing them of copying her TikTok ideas and not giving her credit. Their commercial included a very similar story of a teenage girl and her father connecting over football and Taylor Swift. The commercial featured a mixed-race teenage girl and a white dad, while Sharon is black with a white stepfather. In the commercial, the girl's doing her makeup slash skincare at a vanity when the dad walks in, which is the exact format that Sharon had in her TikToks. In the commercial, the dad walks into the girl's room and puts skincare under his eyes, which is exactly what Sharon's dad did with the eye patches. Sharon's TikTok has garnered a lot of support, which led to people flooding the comment section of Cetaphil's TikTok, telling them that they need to give Sharon proper credits and even compensation. A uh, TikTok of them reacting to seeing the commercial where they feel like their story has been completely copied. This is her page, go give her a like. And is I would have hired the real thing. I mean, y'all basically hired their clones and I would have started the Super Bowl campaign months ago by sending this creator and her stepdad set of full products. Okay, so, okay, so let's 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 talk from the beginning. For really quickly basics, intellectual property, you probably heard the term intellect is property. any concept or thought that come out your head that you spit out in the form of a song, of a book, of a novel, of a poetry series of anything that you think of even business practices so in the united states when you have those things you want to protect it and there's two ways you can protect it you protect it so before the fact if someone wants to use it if you pitch it to someone to use it they can license it out they can produce it for you for pay in advance or the reason why you register it in the United States is because let's say someone uses it without your permission, you can then go and sue them or make a claim and have them pay you after the fact. So there's trade secrets. So for example, KFC has 11 herbs and spices. That's a trade secret. So if someone leaks that and someone starts making chicken on it, they can sue. Then you have trademarks. A famous example of this is resembles this case is um, Kayla Newman who came up with the term on fleek and she didn't trademark that but next thing you know big brands like Hefty and um, eight, all sorts of big brands were using that term in their commercials making lots of money by using a popular co pop culture term that she invented that was her trademark and she really didn't see much out of it now you have copyright copyright again you register and helps you protect it but the minute you come up with something the minute you publish it you get the copyright for it so the minute in this case that sharon mabazi i think that's her, how you pronounce her name published that series on her TikTok, she then immediately had the copyright to it. So what do you get when you have a copyright? When you have a copyright or any trademark, you have the right to to, to display it, to distribute it, to um, decide who gets to use it, who doesn't get to use it, what platform it could appear on. Um, and also you have the right to derivative work. So for example, someone takes your TikTok series and decides to turn it into a Super Bowl ad, that's a derivative of your original copyright work. So they should license out that to use it for derivative purposes. And that's the rights that Sharon has. She has the rights to require Cetaphil to license out her series before they can turn it into a TikTok, I mean, a, a Super Bowl commercial, and they did not. So that's her rights. That's what she can do. She's an attorney. That's what she should be doing and asking them for it fairly. And that's how they should compensate for it. Because there's no doubt that that's her concept. And the reason why we know that's her concept 
And the reason why we know that's her concept, because in, in intellectual property, it's particularly in trademark, one of the reasons why people get trademarks uh, when they see someone comes after them and makes a product in their niche similar is like the likelihood of confusion. Like someone can confuse their product with this other product. So that other product is doing booty stuff and bad practices they could, that could be linked to our product that came first and we have good customer service. And you know that's the case here because the media the, that that ad was a broadcast, a lot of people who saw Sharon's series on TikTok said, I've seen that before. That's Sharon. They started tagging her. So be, based on that, if she would go to court, she has a really great claim about likelihood of confusion that that is my concept. Now, what can Cedfield do to make it right? So because Cedfield's getting tagged so much, what they did was release a sort of like statement saying that, oh, we talked to her and uh, we were so happy that we after you guys were tagging us, we became aware of it. Essentially sort of essentially sort of saying that we did this first and we didn't know it was similar to hers. Now, what again, now what I think likely happened, and then people were also tagging, I'm not quite sure if this is the agency because I don't have proof of that, but they were tagging this agency they said that pitched that commercial to Cetaphil, right? And you look into the, the the comments of the last post that this agency did, people are going in on them saying, pay that woman, right? So what most likely happened, and I'm gonna I'm gonna quote a quote from I saw from the fader about these concepts of, of black creators, um, ingenuity, inventiveness, and just talent skills, slang being commoditized and why it's not necessarily considered trademarky, why people feel like it's okay to just take, because Intangible things like slang and styles of dance are not considered valuable except when they're produced by large entities willing and able to invest in trademarking them. And that is why. And then similarly, what most likely happened in terms of why whoever from that agency, if someone from the agency saw Sharon's concept before, didn't necessarily think to go back and tag her, besides the fact that people just don't really think about that necessarily when they should, is this concept. Cultural sharing is ancient, that the speed and relative borderlessness of the internet makes cross-platform global dissemination seem like a consequence of tech is a convenient amnesia. So essentially, it's like, you know, culture is, you see it, it goes from platform to platform, you don't know where you saw it first, it's hard to do that. But the minute you're going to pitch it to a big brand for use, that's your job as an agency, that's your brand as a creative person, to know that this concept came from someplace else, this didn't come off the top of my head, I had to have seen this somewhere before. And the reason why they had to know that scene before, because there are in America and across the world, multiracial people or black people who have stepdads or who have fathers who are actually white, either by birth or from adoption or from marriage. They had, the commercial had a biracial girl with a white dad. Sharon is a black girl, you know, unambiguously black girl with a, an unambiguously white dad. So the parallels are just there. They had to know that come from somewhere. And what we do in social media, I know what I do. Sometimes you scroll, you see something's funny, and you laugh. You keep scrolling. You don't favor it. You don't follow the creator. So if you don't favor it or follow the creator, it's kind of hard, especially you go from platform to platform to platform. It's like, wow, where did that see that before? I had promised my friend to get her something I saw. I don't know where I, I, did, I saved it. I might not have saved it. I don't know what platform. I saw it and I'm like forget about it but that's fine for me because I'm just you know it's casual but when you're talking about commerce pitching a concept you can't be playing with like saying well I don't know where I got it from I think I, I saw it somewhere it's a cute concept let's pitch it because you got to know that people have memories and people follow their faves and people support their faves people will tag their faves and you're gonna have a PR nightmare like what Setfield is having here so how they can get it right after the fact is they've acknowledged that the similarity is is I think what they need to do is hold the fire to the agency that pitched it to them and say, hey, come on, Is what are the likelihood that you really got this concept from Sharon? And once they admit them, hold them to it because they're, you're letting an agency bring your brand down. So the quicker you recognize and let them say, okay, yes, we did get this from her. It's, it's most likely this is where we got it from. After the fact, you can then compensate her for after the fact, a license of her concept. That's the only way I can do it. And the PR person, if you saw the PR pitch, pitch person said that the way they would have done it, they would have in advance when they acknowledged it, you know, given it to her, given it to Kayla and other creators. They would have done all this other stuff. But the thing about it is that's what have, could have, should have. That's kind of post hoc rationalization. I don't think the timeline aligned itself so that they would have in advance discovered this. And it's not going to be the same, you know. And then it's not going to be equal. Like by the time the D'Amelio's acknowledged Jamila Harmon for originating Renegade, 
the, op the, the time had already passed. People had already been giving the D'Amelios all of the opportunities and all the showcases and things like that. Her family all blew up. So Harmon's going to get something, but it's never going to be equal to what uh, the D'Amelios would have gotten anyway because they are who they are. They have a following that's separate. And then just some people are just going to just do better, just a more commercial as a story for another day. <laughs> so it's never going to be the likes. Anyway, so those are my thoughts on it. If you're interested in concepts like this, follow, subscribe. You're watching this on YouTube. Share with your friends. Let's discuss below. Watch this series next. <laughs>